How did it feel when you guys discovered that you were landed the role in a Disney production? Not everyone could say that. Uh, I read a lot of people for Olivia's part. I because I, Olivia was wasn't it written that she was from Austria or something? I think I wrote it that she was German. I can't. Oh, remember. Yeah. I can't yeah. remember. And I, I think know. I saw that. all these. I think I saw Famke Jansen. I saw a lot of, I think I wrote it that she was Eastern European. I'm not sure. My memory is kind of dodgy, but I don't. It, and then someone, Danny said, well, the greatest actress in that group is Olivia Dopp. She's funny. She's the great. So, and then I met Olivia and she was so great. So then I think I made it British. I don't think you were supposed to initially be British. That's but right. I remember because I remember coming in the callback to read with Steve. Yeah, it was Steve. Yeah. And uh, it was a screen test. And I think Roger might have been there and Danny was definitely there and you were there, of course. I think you'd come to a screening of that Bob Balaban movie I'd done. And yes. I think we were discussing something, not to digress from the big green, but this all adds up to the question that you've just asked. Uh, and I think, Holly, you said, yeah, I really like how your lipstick blended in with the with the wallpaper. <laughs> of the, you, you know, the, it was the attention to detail, but you had been... Well, I'm, I'm friends with Balaban, and I love Balaban. Who so, doesn't love Balaban? Yeah, and who doesn't love so Balaban? So I, I think I called him. I think yes. Balaban, Oh my God, she's the greatest person in the whole world. So <laughs> you know what's so funny? This is such a digression, but when you had your baby shower, and I met the person who's now my husband of 27 years, I was sitting there i was i think 34 or 35 years old i don't know how old i was 35 maybe and 36 anyway and i was divorced and i had two children and when i went to parties i didn't i didn't lead if i would had just met a young man around my age i didn't start by going hey guess what i've got two kids and i'm divorced i didn't say that i just oh i work in film and television he yeah. had a movie out at the same time my husband had written major pain with damon wayans so we released the big green released a week we're, we're so we're both have movies in the movie theater when we met each other and i'm talking to him we have so much in common it's crazy we we're both writing and doing comedies working for studios he's working for universal i've been working for disney and it's just going great. I'm thinking this guy is so, he's such a cool guy. And your mother comes up. Oh, no, no. Goes, no. Mother goes, oh, Holly, it's so good to see you. And I said, oh, it's great to see you. I love your mother. So it's great to see you. And then she goes, how's your son? <laughs> I remember that Gary just looked at me. I'm not wearing a wedding. He had a daughter. He had a daughter. He has a daughter, does he not? No, yeah. he's never been married. Never been married, and he didn't have any kids. So mm -hmm. I say, um, "Oh my, my son is doing well. He's great." I don't say there's two of them. He's great. And then your mom went off to do some more entertaining, and then I turn to Gary and I say, "I'm divorced, and I have a son." I don't say I have two of them. I just <laughs> say I have one. I have a son and I can see, I believe he says it's not true, but I think he seems, you know, somewhat less interested in the divorce mother, but, um, and then we keep talking and now we're reconnecting again and 20 minutes pass and your mom comes by again and she goes, I just want to know how the boys are. <laughs> <laughs> and now without missing a beat, oh, here, no. he goes, here he goes. So I take it. There's more than one. <laughs> Oh my God, my mom does not mince, mince her words. This it never has. Yes, there's two. And then yeah. he's just quiet for me. He goes, Irish in her. It's he goes, Irish in her. daughters? And I went, yes. no, just the two sons. Just yeah, the two. Yeah. Oh my God. Anyway, That's I an started. awesome story, by the way. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, there's so much uh, 
sort of stuff that was surrounding it, call it fate or kismet or whatever that surrounded both Holly and I and Roger and, and all of the people we've just mentioned, Steve, everybody, every, there, was a, there was a correlation to every little part and bit that somehow brought the cast together and all the people involved, all of the creatives and the crew and, you know, the DP, our DP was so amazing. I just loved him. Um, I thought it was, he's no longer alive, but he was, became my best friend and oh. was one of the most amazing people in the, like he did Coal Miner's Daughter, Saturday Night Fever. He, yeah. But I remember after the first week of shooting, I'd gotten sick on two days before we started. So when we started, I didn't want anyone to know, but I was on antibiotics and I had a bad sore throat and um, and I uh, I got through the week. I just didn't know if I was gonna get through the week and I, I did and it was Friday and we filmed all day and I got into the van and I sat down in the van. They were gonna drive me back to base camp and the key grip got in the van and he'd done many, many movies. And he sat down. I don't know if he was nervous that had been a woman and was going to be directing this movie. And he got in the van. He sat behind me and he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, Holly. And I went, mm hmm. And he went, you did really good. And that's all he said. And I put my head down. I didn't want to cry because I was so tired from the whole week. Oh, my gosh. And I knew that he knew. I knew he knew he'd been on so many sets. Like I said, he ended up doing Titanic and, and he knew, and, and he said, I did good. So I, I was like, okay. I think oh, I, you were the, you were the life of the party. Oh, shit. I was like, okay, I can finish it. I can do it. Yeah. And I would never have known that you were sick. There was no, you know, you were very good at, uh, you know, you just soldier sold, sold on, yeah. I'd never your your pink. In fact, your cheeks were particularly rosy. The yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I probably had a fever of one hundred and three. But I, so the very <laughs> first day, they there's a thing on when you shoot your first day. They try to give you your first day to be an easy day because the crew is yeah. not used to each other and the actors aren't used to each other. And so they said, "We're going to give you, and you're sick. We don't want people to know you're sick, but we're going to give you a pretty." Easy first day. So my first shot, I had written in there was a three-legged dog. And there was a man walking a three-legged dog. He's a meta the three-legged dog's a metaphor for the town, for a town that's down, that is uh has some issues. And the man's supposed to walk the three-legged dog, and then um the car that Olivia is driving by, which was this red convertible, is supposed to go by the three-legged dog and she's supposed to turn and look at the three-legged dog. I think we might have had a stunt driver or something for you at one point. Yes, we did. So we set up the cameras and all I need is this one shot and then I'm going to have my first shot and then they are going to call the studio and they always say, what was the time of the first shot? They give you, you have a call time. Okay, we're going to be, the crew calls at six, the actors are 6.30. Um, she's going to try to get her first shot off at eight. And I'm really conscious of it. I directed commercials, but I hadn't directed any movies. I'm conscious. I, I got to get my first shot off and we get everything in place. The guy with the, the three legged dog, the red convertible. And now the red convertible drives by and the three legged dog supposed to be in the foreground. It's a metaphor for people. It's a metaphor for people that need to try. And the dog, the, the car gets close to the dog. And the dog takes off and the dog bolts. It leaves the trainer. It runs off to three legged dog. So it doesn't even, and, and the dog's gone. And the trainer turns to me and he goes, well, I guess now is the time to tell you how he lost his leg. <laughs> uh, what was the scene oh like in God. the intro? What was the scene like in the intro when they cover themselves with Cheetos and pigeons land on them? Oh yeah, well that when we finally shot that, we were so nervous about these fire ants because there were fire ants there. But um, anyway, that dog lost his leg in a car accident, and so I had to just cut it. I had just to say, all right, well we can't find the dog, and I need to get the first shot off. So I just changed the first shot to the convertible drive spy. Forget the dog, no dog. Um, the Cheetos that was really fun. And remember, you drive up and and you've got the hose, and we decided yeah. to crank it, make it a so little. Glad bit. I'm so glad it's so Charlie Chaplin. 
Yeah, we were making it really staccato, Charlie Chaplin comedy. And the, the kids in the beginning were nervous about putting the Cheetos on them because the birds really uh, pissed them. <coughs> right. And they had been, the bird person had been training with his stunt people so that the birds knew to do it. But we didn't have the kids do it until we were going to film. And we didn't want to rehearse it. So we just, we put them down and they put the stuff on them. And it actually was really tickling and also sort of scaring them. So all the reactions completely jumped like they're going, <laughs> and I was so I think that was the moment in that if I'm not mistaken, was in the first week. Uh, that's when I immediately just started becoming really paternal over these kids. And that was just me, basically. Well, I mean a very silly side of me, but I am rather silly, but uh, you know. I just, there was a, a, a Cro-Magnum sort of cave woman that came out of me, a, a mother of... Well, I, the kids were totally in love with you, so it's oh like you were mothering them, but they were, the kids, when, when Olivia would be there, the boys would just be, I mean, they were all 12, 13, 14, and like, she would come out and they would, I, that was the only way they would totally pay attention was Olivia was there. You know, so, oh, that's very was there. Steve had to keep taking them off to the side and go, okay, stop, stop. Steve got it. It was so cute. But that was an incredibly, that was a really, that was one of my favorite scenes because it was uh, immediately, you immediately got the intention of this, you know, character that I was playing that is that she's just earnest and she's protective. And, yeah. it, you know, when she sees she's very ethical and socially, moralistically, fundamentally quite set in her ways, you know. Um, and, you know, some people are by that stage in their life. And, uh, you know, I just think she just saw the birds. They were attacking the boys. and She wanted to do whatever she could to preserve their safety. And so however I went about going for that as an objective. We had that hose and we had to spray them with the hose and they were all screaming and I, basically anything the kids did, they were just enjoying it. So I had gone to the beach with my own kids and I had them in the sand and I sprinkled popcorn around their feet and all these birds came. So that's how I got the idea for it because my own kids at the time thought that was so funny and they were laughing and, oh, you know, I've got to put that in the movie, but I, I'll figure out a way anyway it did. i mean and it's 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 a it's such a standout scene you know so funny well you guys i it's it's getting close to the end of the hour and um i actually am going to a book i'm an author now of you're incredible novel. you're writing you've got a you've got a novel coming out i mean hello i'm not gonna say something about it because um, it's my first novel for adult readers. I've written books that are for young kids, for their they're for young people. And one of my books, Counting by Sevens, has sold a million copies. So that's all really worked out. But I have my first book that's for adult readers, and it's called Pieces of Blue. And it was just an op Oprah just uh, picked it as a spring <gasps> read. So, um, so I'm really happy about that. And I hope that some kind of movie gets made out of it and olivia you would be good as the main character if i do an adaptation hold on i'm gonna grab the she's supposed to be from wales the main oh, character is from oh, wales. My favorite. so sweet oh my god i haven't even had a chance to meet you guys what um, i would just this carry is my, book. This is my book i'm gonna jump off and olivia you stay on it's called pieces of blue and um Olivia, I'm having a party at my house for it when I, I'm going on tour. I'm with Henry Louis Gates in Boston, Professor Gates. I'm with Richard Kind in New York. Um, I'm at Books and Books in Miami. I'm going to San Francisco, Seattle, Portland, Nashville, and Houston. Oh, uh, all such fun places. Awesome. And, uh, May 14th at my house, Liv. Okay. Okay. I'm awesome. there with bells on. Okay. It's Mother's Day. Hilarious. <laughs> Great. Honestly, I'm having a book party on Mother's Day. Anyway, I'm going to jump off. You guys stay on. Um, I love you, sweetie, and thank you so love much. For I love you, thank Holly. You for me. Bye, you guys. Thanks. Thank you, Holly. Bye, Holly. Thank so, you. So, Olivia, how are yes. you doing? I'm good. Thank you. <laughs>